You are watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another TV show sort of video. Once again, this video has been requested by Rabid Waffles, and of course his links will be in the end screen and description as per the usual. So, as you can see, he has asked me to do a top 10 list of my favorite horror shows. Now, this is a very hard thing to do, because there are a lot of different horror shows out there. Another factor is, who's to say what actually qualifies as a horror show? Because I think the title is actually somewhat subjective. So, bearing both those things in mind, and without further ado, let's get on to my list. Number 10, Hannibal. More specifically, the first two seasons of Hannibal. I didn't really like the third at all. In fact, if it wasn't for the lackluster third season, this would probably be higher up on the list, or lower, depending on how you want to argue semantics. I love the Hannibal Lecter movies, but this show is, uh, sort of went for the contemporary prequel route, somewhat like Bates Motel. And I love all the stuff that's adapted from Red Dragon, and the parts that take place before Red Dragon. But when they start putting in things from the other entries in the Hannibal series, they started getting things all really messed up chronologically. Mads Mikkelsen puts on a pretty good performance as Hannibal Lecter, however he's no Anthony Hopkins, and I think that's part of why I don't like it as much. It's a very different take on the character, but it is a welcome one. I also really like, uh, Lawrence Fishburne as Jack Crawford. And the guy who plays Will Graham is also great, and I like the whole take that they have with his whole empathizing with the killers, so it kind of shows it from their perspective. But anyway, there's a lot of weird things that I don't like about it. It's very artsy, especially in the third season. And like I said, they start doing things, taking things from Hannibal and Hannibal Rising and all sorts of random parts of the novels and movies that just don't make sense chronologically where they are. But, you know, things like that. Also, Will's relationship with Hannibal is a bit odd to me. It's fine, but it comes off as awkward to me quite often. Anyway, I still do recommend you check it out, but it is definitely one of those that's kind of hit or miss. Number 9, Freddy's Nightmares, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Series. Freddy's Nightmares, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Series, I think is kind of an overlooked gem. It does have a few bad episodes, and if you're expecting a full series dedicated to Freddy Krueger, you will be disappointed. There are three episodes, I think, that actually have Freddy Krueger as the central focus of the plot, but most of them have nothing to do with him. He's more of a host. This show is essentially what would happen if Tales from the Crypt was hosted by Freddy Krueger. And while it's nothing compared to Tales from the Crypt, it's still an entertaining watch. If you want to watch it, I recommend getting the Region 2 DVD that contains the first three episodes, because the first episode is really my favorite because it's completely dedicated to Freddy Krueger's backstory, and that's the only actual way to get it on DVD. Most of the series has actually not seen a DVD or Blu-ray release, or even a digital release to my knowledge. I believe it has all been released on VHS, so that's probably your best bet to go about it. They may be PAL VHS, so if you're in the US as I am, you may need a multi-system player. And of course, if you have the Region 2 DVD and you're not in Region 2, you'll also need a special player. Although, if you just want a couple of episodes just to get an idea for the feel of the series, you could always get the Nightmare on Elm Street Complete Series Blu-ray pack, because that does include two episodes as a bonus feature. However, it doesn't include the first episode, which has to do with Freddy Krueger's backstory. But anyway, if you've seen Tales from the Crypt, or Goosebumps, or Are You Afraid of the Dark, it's that kind of show, a horror anthology series. Obviously more for adults, so it's more similar to Tales from the Crypt, but you get the basic idea if you're at least familiar with one of those things. Anyway, let's move on. Number 8, Goosebumps. This is strictly on the list for nostalgic reasons. But Goosebumps is basically a kid version of Tales from the Crypt. It's similar also to Are You Afraid of the Dark, but I didn't grow up with that one, so that one's not on this list. But I do love Goosebumps, and if you like Tales from the Crypt, it is pretty decent for a kid version of it. Problem with Goosebumps, though, is for every one amazing episode, there's about 10 or 11 really, really shitty episodes. For instance, I love The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Uh, Night of the Living Dummy, Night of the Living Dummy 2 and 3, as well as, uh, I also really like Welcome to Dead House, but then you get shit like My Hairiest Adventure, or It Came from the Kitchen Sink. Awful episodes. So Goosebumps is a show I absolutely love, and it's basically like a kid-friendly version of Tales from the Crypt. It's even more kid-friendly than Are You Afraid of the Dark, which is also a kid series. It also doesn't have the Crypt Keeper, and, uh, it's just barely better than Freddy's Nightmares, in my opinion, but only because of nostalgia. Anyway, let's move on. Number 7, Lost Tapes. Lost Tapes was a show that aired on Animal Planet for three seasons and was a mockumentary-style show about cryptids. It was a found-footage TV show, which you don't see very often. And it, of course, was also more of an anthology rather than having a linked universe. Now, on top of the Lost Tapes, which, of course, were fictional, they also used people coming in and giving real testimonials on why they believed these cryptids or monsters were existed. Lost Tapes was definitely an entertaining show, but uh, it was, in my opinion, kind of flew under the radar. I mean, a few kids I knew talked about it back in high school, but that was about it. And you can buy some of the seasons online on Amazon. 
Now, uh, if you like things like the movie VHS and VHS 2, then I think you'd like Lost Tapes. There is a little bit more to it with the investigative parts that are based on real-world events and settings and things like that. Or at least allegedly are. But there are some issues with the show as well. There are some really bad episodes. Particularly the Thunderbird episode. I fucking hate that episode. So they're talking about the cryptid and giving all this information about the cryptid. And then they randomly throw up this statistic about skateboarding accidents. Okay, what the hell does that have to do with the cryptid and facts to support its existence? But anyway, it's a really good show and I definitely recommend you do check it out. Anyway, on to the next one. Number six, Another. Another is an anime series, which I've mentioned briefly in a few other videos. And without spoil, it does center around some calamity that happened in a classroom years ago, revolving around the death of a student. And ever since then, strange things have been happening there. There's this girl that you don't know if she exists, if she's a ghost, or what have you, and then there's also people just start dying. If you haven't seen it, I do recommend checking it out. It is only 12 episodes, and at the time I'm recording this, it is still available on Crunchyroll. So anyway, let's move on. Number five, Bates Motel, or more specifically, the first three seasons of Bates Motel. Because I did not like season four or five really all that much. See, Bates Motel is a contemporary prequel to Psycho, similar in a way to how Hannibal is, although Bates Motel really felt more like a prequel than Hannibal did. Because until about season five, they didn't have any elements from the actual Psycho films until the fifth season, like I said. Bates Motel follows a young Norman Bates and Norma Bates as they move to a new motel and begin running it and dealing with this crazy town that they live with. And as the series progresses, Norman go grows more and more into the insanity that we're used to with Norman Bates. This is a very good show, but I do feel it goes downhill after season three. Season three was perfect, but season four was a very big disappointment because it was kind of boring for all the Norman parts. Then season five, they had some really stupid twists that I didn't like, and they also, I did not like the ending really that much. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the greatest. Plus, it had Rihanna in it, who... Did better than I thought, but it's still Rihanna acting. She's not the greatest. But anyway, I still do recommend you check it out, especially the first three seasons. If you like the Psycho films, then Bates Motel's for you. Number four, Higurashi When They Cry, also known as Higurashi no Nakakoroni, or just When They Cry. More specifically, the very first arc, although I do love every bit of this series, with the exception of a couple of the OVAs. The very first arc of Higurashi was a very intense and dark, creepy, brooding atmosphere. I wasn't sure where all they were going, and there was all this talk of demons, and the town wanting to kill the main character, and all sorts of creepiness that just kind of felt right. The subsequent arcs are still awesome, as is the second season. Apart from the first arc, the second season is actually my favorite part of that series. I'm also watching a follow-up series they did called Yumi Neko When They Cry, but it's not as good. But anyway, it's definitely something you should check out. It's a very creepy series, at least for the first six episodes, and then after that it's still a really cool series. But uh, that's about all I have to say about that. I don't want to say too much because it is spoilery, although I will say it does involve a remote village and a cult. But anyway, let's move on. Number three, The Twilight Zone. Now, it's arguable whether or not this is actually horror. It definitely has a lot of horror elements to it, and there are some episodes that are more horror-like than others. And there's also quite a lot of sci-fi to this show, but if you're unfamiliar with The Twilight Zone, you must be living under a rock, but... The Twilight Zone is an anthology series, meaning every episode is a different, unrelated story from the last. The whole point of The Twilight Zone is to explore weirdness, to showcase things that just wouldn't happen or don't make sense. And because of that, it often places characters in situations that are very nerve-wracking for them. I haven't finished the entire series. I've been watching through it on Netflix. They have most of the original series. They don't have the fourth season, which is the hour-long episodes, which don't ask me why, but whatever. But uh, I'm, of course, referring to the original Twilight Zone as well. I haven't seen any of the 80s remake or the movie. But my personal favorite episode of the Twilight Zone as of now actually isn't one of the more horror-like episodes. As of right now, my favorite episode, I don't remember the title of it, but it's about this guy that gets sent back in time and sees himself as a child, and he ends up injuring himself by trying to tell him that, uh, you know, this is the best summer he'll ever have or something like that. It's, it's a really fucking good episode. I don't know why I like it that much. Probably because of childhood nostalgia, and this makes me think of stuff like that, but uh, it's a very good show. Uh, there's a lot of horror-like episodes. There's a lot of not-so-horror-like episodes, but it's got a lot of weirdness to it and a lot of unexplainable things that happen. But uh, anyway, let's move on. Number three and a half, Channel Zero. Why the hell am I doing three and a half? Because this isn't number two. In fact, it's not even better 
better than number three. I'd say it actually would fall bet somewhere between number nine and number six. The problem is, is I didn't remember this series until about the time I started recording this segment. So I decided to shoehorn it in here because it's definitely a part of this list. I just don't know exactly where it stands and I didn't want to have to rework all the parts I've already recorded. Channel Zero is an anthology series where every season is its own story, similar to American Horror Story, however with the distinction that this focuses on creepypastas. Now I love creepypastas, so this show is really cool. I've only seen the first season, which was about Candle Cove, and although I don't like the payoff to that season, the rest of it was solid. And season two is going to be based on No End House. Judging by the trailers, I'd say No End House Volume 2, rather than Volume 1, because it has Margaret as the main character, who I think is supposed to be Maggie from the story, since Maggie is short for Margaret. But anyway, it's a really good show, and uh, I think it did Candle Cove really well. Other than that shit with the tooth child, and the stuff with the end where he's in side, like Candle Cove or something. I don't know, it's really weird. Most of the series is really solid. Alright, so number two is actually a tie, simply because, again, I forgot about a couple series. And I honestly can't decide which one of these is better. So, the tie is between Castlevania, the Netflix series, because that was fucking awesome, even though it was only four episodes so far, and Tales from the Crypt, because I love me some campy anthology series hosted by the Crypt Keeper. Castlevania, the Netflix series, is obviously based on the video game series of the same name. And it's got plenty of gore, plenty of violence, and plenty of disturbing imagery. I think this is probably the best American anime I've seen come out in recent years, and again, I know that's a term that may be slightly controversial amongst anime purists, but again, that's just what I use to describe things made in an anime style in the US. And as far as I can tell, this was. Tales from the Crypt is like Freddy's Nightmares, only ten times better because number one, the Crypt Keeper's better, and number two, the stories are better. There are a few bad episodes, but most off, it's good. Anyway, let's move on. Now for a couple of honorable mentions. First off, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. The only reason this wasn't on the list is because I didn't know whether it counted as horror or not, so I didn't include it. But if it was included, it would be very high up. Top three, probably. Other than that... Uh, the other honorable mention I have here is Courage the Cowardly Dog, which probably would have been on this list had I thought of it sooner. But as I've already done a three and a half, and then done number two as a tie, I felt it was best just to forget it and put this as an honorable mention. Courage the Cowardly Dog is a great show, as is The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. They're both cl Cartoon Network classics, and I recommend checking them out if you haven't seen them. So honorable mention, Are You Afraid of the Dark? It's very similar to Goosebumps, but it's not something I grew up with, and I've only seen three episodes of it. So other than that, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the top spot. Number one, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Ash vs. Evil Dead is the follow-up to the Evil Dead movie franchise, and follows the continuing adventures of Ash, the main character from that franchise. Ash vs. Evil Dead is a horror comedy much in the vein of Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. The comedy is somewhere in between the two, but uh, I'd still say Army of Darkness is better. Uh, I would say I like Ash vs. Evil Dead better than Evil Dead 2, which I know is a bit controversial that I prefer Army of Darkness and Ash vs. Evil Dead over Evil Dead 2, but it's probably more controversial that I prefer Evil Dead 1 over Evil Dead 2. That being said, all the Evil Dead movies are great. Even the remake was done decently. It's not the best, but it is still pretty decent. And the remake is actually the first Evil Dead movie I saw. It's what got me into the franchise. But anyway, Ash vs. Evil Dead is great. It's got plenty of one-liners, plenty of action, plenty of comedy, and a little bit of horror snipped in here and there. And of course, it stars Bruce Campbell, who is one of my all-time favorite actors. But yeah, it's a very great show, and if you haven't seen it, I do recommend you check it out. Unfortunately, it is only available on Stars. so if I were you, I'd just recommend getting the DVDs or Blu-rays. But other than that, it is really good, and I do recommend you check it out. But anyway, I definitely recommend you check out Ash vs. Evil Dead if you are a fan of the original series. So that's my list of my top 10, give or take, favorite horror TV shows. I also would have probably thrown in Shiki and uh, The Lost Village as honorable mentions, but again, this video has become kind of a hot mess towards the end here, but I still think it turned out okay. I do recommend all of these shows, and I do think there needs to be more good horror shows out there, but as it stands, these are the best ones here. And this list is not necessarily set in stone, because there are a lot of great things out there that I may not have factored into this. But anyway, this has been Fugitive Red Eye, and you have a great day. Subscribe to Fugitive Red Eye.